August 2023 is a month of transition and maybe even feeling a little bit like we're all in this like liminal space, the space between things. So some themes that will be imperative for you to look at in your life over the course of this month are sitting with your own ability to be grounded amid change and your ability to cultivate intentional communication without falling into like my way or the highway type thinking and then also maybe paying extra special attention or rekindling your health and wellness practices, things that really make you feel well in your body, in your life, in your spiritual practices. So we're going to talk about how to do that, why astrologically I say all those things, what is going down in the sky in the month of August 2023, and of course we'll end with yoga practices and journal prompts for the month. Like if you like to do a sort of month end reflection and then sort of set your intentions for the month ahead, you could use these practices or theme your yoga classes if you're a teacher around these things for the entire month. So first of all, I'd like to extend you a warm welcome to the Yogi Scopes podcast. I'm your host, Rosemary Holbrook. So we use the Vedic sidereal system of astrology around here, which means some of the placements or things that I'm talking about might be different than things you're seeing or hearing like on social media or elsewhere. So if this is your first time like hearing of Vedic astrology or your first sort of brush with Vedic astrology, that might be something new and it doesn't mean that I'm wrong or that other people are wrong. They're just different systems, right? So um, if you don't know your Vedic birth chart or anything about the sidereal system, I have some resources on my website. They're always linked in the show notes of the podcast, or you can go to yogiscopes.com slash chart to get your Vedic birth chart. There's a handy free worksheet there to help you interpret what you're looking at. And now a brand new mini course that is sort of an extension of that birth chart decoder. We'll have our first Q and A quarterly Q and A. So anybody that signs up for the mini course gets, um, it's called birth chart basics. I will link that in the show notes as well. We'll get access to these live Q and A sessions. The first one is on August 20th at 11 AM Eastern time. If you're in the membership, you are welcome to join that. You already have access to birth chart basics. If you are in the membership, just FYI. Um, so don't worry about going to rush out and buy the course if you're already in the membership. And so without further ado, let's get into what's happening astrologically. Those are just some resources to help you understand Vedic astrology or some of the differences between Vedic and Western astrology on your own time. Anyway, we're kicking off the month with a full moon. So that's kind of interesting. It's, it's like a really extra good energy to take some time right here around the, full, the first of the month to reflect on the past month and set your intentions for the upcoming month. I mean, what better time to do that than a full moon? And so the fact that the the month is starting with a full moon on the first, and the month is nearly ending with a full moon on the last day. We have a, a blue moon on the 30th, which just means two full moons it, within a calendar month is a blue moon. It's not really a Vedic astrology concept, but as I sent in my last newsletter that you get if you've gotten the birth chart decoder, um, we're all subject to calendars. So it's, it's interesting. It feels like a time of transition because we're switching sort of to have two full moons in this month means that instead of the full moons being at the beginning of the month, like they've been, they're now going to be towards the end of the month. Um, for what it's worth in Vedic astrology, we're also within, this is the Vedic astrology analogous concept is we're in what's called a Dika Masa, which is the intercalary month. So Vedic astrology is a lunar system, which means it, your moon sign is going to be more important than your sun sign in Vedic astrology. So that's kind of the first thing when people get their Vedic chart and they're like, what do you mean? I was like a Capricorn and now I'm a Sagittarius. I felt like a Capricorn my whole life and this doesn't make sense. And it's like, well, check your rising and moon sign because those are going to be more important. There's reasons for that. Um, but one of the main things is Vedic astrology puts a lot more emphasis on the moon sign, which makes sense because the sun stays in a sign for about a month, you know, and the moon moves through the signs, all 12 signs in a month. 
So it already, that's already going to be more accurate because how likely is it really that you're going to have a lot in common with all the people born in the whole entire same month as you? It makes a little more sense to pay more attention to the moon sign that's changing every two and a half days or changing lunar mansion nakshatra every uh, day or so. And then also the rising sign that's t changing every two and a half hours. That's just, the system feels a lot more accurate to me because those two factors, I digress. We are in an intercalary month right now, which is Vedic astrology's way of recognizing that the lunar calendar that Vedic astrology uses is not going to sync up to the Gregorian calendar, the regular calendar, like August 1st through 31st, that calendar um, that the literal rest of the world uses. So there's this, um, we operate under lunar months and that's what a lot of the holidays and things are like Guru Purnima, you may have heard of that one's like, for whatever reason, like getting a lot of popularity in the West and people that don't study Vedic astrology are now like celebrating Guru, Guru Purnima. So that, for example, is based off the lunar calendar. And Adhika Masa is just a time to like pause and do spiritual practices and let the lunar calendar link back up again with the um, like solar calendar, Gregorian calendar kind of thing. And the, it, so it happens once every three years. We're in one right now. And because it falls during the month of Shravana, which is the lunar month marked by this full moon we, we're having on August 1st in the nakshatra of Shravana, the fact that this intercalary month falls during the month of Shravana. So really it's been going on since about mid July. Um, and it will go on through August. It is just an extra auspicious time for like spiritual practices. And so what does that mean? Like in your life, it's like, take some time to slow down and not be so like outward, maybe turn a little bit more inward and find more ways to find that connection to whatever feels like a spiritual connection to you in your life this month, this entire month is a good time for that. So then let's talk about the other astrological happenings of the month now that we've talked about the blue moons and um, the Vedic astrology analogous um, concept, which is the intercalary month, the Adhika Masa. Also, before I mention all the other things, we are having a new moon in Cancer and it will be our second new moon in Cancer. So we had a new moon in Cancer in July, I believe, right? And then... This new moon in Cancer is happening um, August 16th, and so it will be the second new moon in Cancer, and it's happening where Venus will finish up her retrograde in Cancer. So, And then, not to get too ahead of ourselves, we will also have Mercury going retrograde in August, um, like shortly after this new moon. So the... Um, Venus and Mercury retrograde will overlap like on the calendar, but not in the night sky. More on that in a moment. But so this month we're having a new moon in the sign of Cancer where Venus will have, will spend the most of her retrograde time. And it's our second new moon in Cancer. Then we're also having a blue moon as in two full moons this month. And then in September, we're having a new moon in Leo where Mercury will spend the entire retrograde period that I'll talk about in a second. And we'll have a whole separate episode about the Mercury retrograde, just like there was a whole separate episode about the Venus retrograde because it's important. So just FYI, we have all these retrogrades going on right now. That's another thing contributing to this sort of like liminal space energy that I'm talking about. We're in this sort of like, like go back and redo, rethink some things in your life, be okay with the fact that things might be changing. Um, and work on your ability to sort of like sit with that, okay? So um, that is all because we have a blue moon this month. It's also the intercalary month, Adhika Masa. And then we have, we just, we're having our second new moon in Cancer in a row, which is not like a normal thing that happens to have two new moons in the same sign in a row. Um, and then we're also having all these retrogrades. So let's talk about the other things happening astrologically. Kicking off the month with a full moon in Capricorn in Shravana. Did a separate episode about that. On Monday, August 7th, Venus will retrograde back into Cancer. So that's about 
12.47 a.m. Eastern Time. So over the night of Sunday, August 6th into Monday, August 7th, wherever you are in the world, it's sometime over that night probably, um, Venus will move back into Cancer. And Venus will be retrograding here in Cancer until September 4th. And then right after that, right after Venus, and so meanwhile, we have lots of outer planets retrograding. Then we will have Mercury go retrograde, I'll talk about in a moment. And then when Venus goes direct, right immediately after that, Jupiter will begin retrograde. So a lot of retrograde stuff going on, typical for this time of year. Um, and then we have on Wednesday, August 16th, the new moon in Cancer, which will be the second new moon in Cancer in a row. And then on Thursday, Thursday, August 17th, so right after our new moon, the sun enters Leo, where Mars is and where Venus has been retrograding for the past couple weeks up until August 7th, when Venus moves backwards into Cancer. And then right after the sun joins Mars in Leo, we will have Mars moving on to Virgo on Friday, August 18th. And then on Wednesday, August 23rd, Mercury goes retrograde in Leo. And then uh, towards the end of the month, we have Uranus going retrograde in Aries, which is where Rahu and Jupiter are. Keep that in mind. We have a Guru Chandal Yoga going on there. Uranus is just, Uranus going retrograde there with Jupiter and Rahu and Aries is adding this kind of like fiery and explosive energy, this sort of like unpredictability energy. Um, around that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And then we're finishing off the month with a full moon in Aquarius in Shatabisha Nakshatra, which is where Saturn is retrograding right now. So all of that to say the major energies of this month are sort of like a slow burn. Okay. So we have retrograde Saturn aspecting Mars in Leo for the majority of the month. And then right when Mars moves away from Leo, the sun will move there, right? So we still have this sort of like fiery energy around Leo being mm, a little bit restricted, a little bit contained by retrograding Saturn. So um, that's creating this like slow burn energy. And so up until August 7th, we've got Venus also retrograding there in Leo. And so Leo is all about your like personal expression, your creativity, um, maybe also like romance. So if it feels like, especially for the first part of the month of August, like the first week or so, if it feels like, and, and really this is true for um, the end of July. So for this time, if it feels like there is some sort of like striking a balance, some sort of like tension between masculine and feminine in your creativity, in your self-expression, in also um, your romance, that kind of thing, if there, that would be likely given that Mars is there in Leo, which represents all these, these things, and Venus retrograde is there, and it's all receiving aspect from a retrograding Saturn. So another factor of that energy of all those planets doing their thing that I just mentioned is um, what is your wellness routine like? Okay, so also, especially when Mars moves into Virgo, this is still true. So Virgo has a lot to do with like your health and wellness routines, your daily routine, how you um, like structure your life to be healthy and maybe also serve others. So when Mars moves there, you might suddenly feel like a renewed passion for these kind of things, a renewed drive. So a good use of that energy is like, I don't know, I hate to say CrossFit, like, but that's what it reminds me of is CrossFit. Um, if you could just do some kind of like, if, if CrossFit doesn't like ignite passion for you, then don't do that. It doesn't for me personally. So, um, but like weight training, maybe Mars, um, something related to Mars could be good. Right. So, and, but that's really true. It just, the energy like shifts a little bit when Mars moves on to Virgo, but it's kind of been true the whole time because Mars to some degree is like physical activity, been there with Saturn receiving gaze from Saturn, retrograding Saturn, which is all about your habits and things like that. And then, and like discipline over motivation, which is Mars. 
Um, and Venus is about like your appearance and, um, what, what makes you feel good and luxurious. So if you can find some kind of physical activity to do on a regular basis, it might be a little more challenging to fall into that routine up until when Mars moves on, on August 18th, but it's a good practice all month to be thinking about some kind of physical activity that really lights you up and really makes you feel like good in your physical body. For me, it's yoga, right? Like, and so if you're here, maybe that too. Maybe it's like a more vigorous yoga practice. You know, let the people have their things. I know, I get it. Like I'm in yoga therapy and lots of other yoga therapists are like um, now all of a sudden against like vinyasa and ashtanga because they've learned like therapeutic yoga and often in a therapeutic setting, we're not doing these more vigorous practices, but I think they still have their time and place. And if that feels like something that lights you up and kind of checks those boxes that I mentioned, whatever, if it's CrossFit, do it. If it's hiking, do it. If it's like some other kind of extreme sport, dirt biking, um, whatever, surfing, I don't know, whatever gets you into your body and makes you feel really good about yourself that you can do on a regular basis and make routine will be really good use of the astrological energies this month that will ease some of the energies. Um, and so remember that this kind of thing is a slow burn. Like you don't just do one CrossFit and all of a sudden you're like hot and loving your body, right? Or like one yoga, you know what I mean? You have to like do it and make it a continual practice. And that's what a lot of the energy of the month is related to this Venus, Mars, Saturn, and then sun dynamic we have going on all month. Um, and then I also want to point out something interesting about this Vena, Venus retrograde and blue moon that I noticed is that the last time Venus retrograded in Leo, so um, Venus, I have an episode on the science of light about it where I interviewed one of my Western astrologer friends about the movements of Venus, but the movements are the same across the two systems, so it's a good episode. Um, maybe I'll try to find it and link it in the show notes, but to, it, that episode like details the movements of Venus. But if you didn't know, Venus will only retrograde through about five of the zodiac signs throughout our entire life because Venus takes an eight-year cycle. So the last time that Venus retrograded in Leo, there was a also a blue moon in Shravana that month. And that was in 2015. And the reason I noticed that, this is maybe a little bit too much like personal TMI, but I am in recovery. If you didn't know this about me, on the day of that blue moon, it was August 1st of 2015, I went to rehab. That is the day I started a, a two year long inpatient rehab program. I had, I got out of jail and went to rehab during the full moon, during that blue moon. And so there's a passenger song called, uh, I think it's called once in a blue moon. Oh, month of Sundays. That's what it's, it's The name of the song is month of Sundays. And so I just heard that song then and so just go listen to the song, but maybe also think back to the summer of 2015, like July and August of 2015. What was going on in your life? Were there any big shifts? Maybe it's not as big as the shift as I was having, which was getting out of jail and going to rehab, which was a pretty um, like big event in my life personally. Um, I have a lot of 12th house placements, so things like hospitalization and institutionalization are in my chart. I have lived through those karmas. That's why I'm also like, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like I made it live to tell the tale. I, I recognize that some people don't. Anyway, that stands out in my life. So I don't always necessarily bring these things up, but maybe in 2015, you had some big shift going on in your life that summer. Maybe not. Maybe you can look back at it. That might give you some clue of like what kind of big shifts might be um, coming to pass in your life right now. Okay. So um, that's the main, like, important points I wanted to, to say about all the stuff happening happening this month. So now let's talk about the overall energies, what it's a good month for, a bad month for, and, of course, your yoga practices and journal prompts. 
So the overall energies are second chances. Like I mentioned with the retrogrades, it's a time to like review and redo or reinforce. So review everything related to, so like for Venus retrograde, it's like relationships, um, go listen to that separate episode I did and reinforce what's working, reimagine or reinvigorate what's not, right? And then for the Mercury retrograde, that'll be in Leo. I'll put out a separate episode about that as we get closer, but it's also, you know, give yourself a second chance related to especially like communication and relationships and also give your loved ones second chances because they are subject to these energies just like you are. Okay. So try to extend that second chance energy to yourself and to people around you. Try to give everybody some grace because you're here listening to astrology. So you know what maybe some other people are not paying as as much attention to the subtle energies of. And so between the retrogrades, the double new moons and the blue moon, it's a good time for second chances around communication, relationships, your exercise routine, that kind of stuff. Like, what do you want a second chance at? Now's your time to just go for it or offer that to somebody else. And I mean, second chance, not necessarily like fifth or seventh chance. I hope that makes sense. If any X's are popping up in your life, this Venus retrograde, um, if there are X's, there's probably a reason they're an X. Anyway, it's also a good month for the overall energy of the month is intentional communication in relationships. So can you slow down and make that time for connection? That's what a lot of what the Venus retrograde energy is, is slow down, make that time for connection to yourself, for connection to what you truly need, what boundaries need to be set for yourself. And how can you communicate that in a loving way to the people that it needs to be communicated to. And then the third overall energy of this month is it's retrograde season. We have, we're nearing the end of Pitta season here in the Northern hemisphere. Um, maybe you're starting to notice those signs of nearing the end of your, um, I guess, Kapha season down there in the Southern hemisphere. Like I've noticed this accumulation of Pitta, which we see um, reflected in the a- astrological happenings of this month, like this, these two fiery planets, Mars and sun sort of switching places. Mars is leaving Leo, the fiery sign of Leo. Sun is entering Leo, which is its own sign. Um, so there is this sort of like accumulation of Pitta energy. I've already just started to see some like red leaves drop. I mean, gosh, we've been having like, there's all these wildfires in Canada. Um, and there's like these hot, extreme hot temperatures, which that's, you know, aside from astrology, but, um, we have this accumulation of this heat, this fiery energy, this pitta and, but we're not done with it yet. Right. We're not quite moving into Vata season, but there is this element of, if you're paying close attention, you can start to feel the subtle energies shifting. And that's what it feels like to be in a liminal space between, we're not quite out of Pitta season. We're not quite moving into Vata season. We're in this liminal, like gray area, right? If that makes sense. And then we're also nearing a Rahu and K2 transit, which ha- so it's happening at the end of October. In October, we will have an eclipse season that will really like bring all this stuff to a head related to the Aries and Libra axis where Rahu and K2 have been. It will... Um, probably any karmas that you haven't worked out so far related to that will really come to a head then. But I'm noticing personally in my life, in my clients and students' lives, and just, and I pay attention with my astrological lens on all the time. And I'm noticing things related to Rahu and K2 they're starting to come to a head. Things are starting to bubble up. So Rahu and K2 spend a year and a half, 18 months in a sign. And the times nearing the end of these longer transits are when things really start to come to a head. Like if you, it's like the the thing with karma is like, you're going to keep being faced with the same lesson. And that lesson will more than likely keep becoming louder until you learn it. And as we near the end of transits is when the lesson becomes louder if you haven't 
answered the call. And so maybe you know what that feels like or looks like in your life. If you're a little bit lost, this would be a good topic for a reading because it's a little too big for me to like try and piecemeal resources for you. Like I could point you back to old podcast episodes, but um, Rahu and K2 transits are big. So if you might want to kind of preemptively get in there before the eclipse season, before things get crazy and be thinking about it. That's adding to this liminal space um, period of transition energy. It's starting to show up now for sure. And we'll only get more prominent in August and especially towards the end of August when Uranus goes retrograde there in Aries with Rahu. So it's a good month for staying grounded emotionally because of all this sort of fiery energy, Venus being retrograde, especially when Venus retrogrades back into Cancer, that might bring up a little bit extra emotions and we'll have that new moon in Cancer there. Um, if you can manage to stay grounded in that, that's what's going to be more productive to work with whatever emotions are coming up. And then also being open to receiving the possibilities of the universe. So that's a theme of all month of Shravana is can you just listen, listen for the little signs and synchronicities and stop trying to like spin your story onto everything and just listen for what is the right answer. Listen to your sensations, listen to your breath, just listen, listen in relationships more than you talk. That is a big theme of the entire month. And so it's also a good month for tapping into your intuition. Cancer is a highly intuitive sign. So especially having this new moon in Cancer and then Venus retrograding back there, can you tap into that intuition a little bit extra? I actually just shared a reel on Instagram about it. I'm trying to get back into Instagram, y'all. So join me there. Just connect with me. Let me know you know me from the podcast and I'd be super glad to connect. Um, and then we also have this beginning of back to school vibes this month with Mars moving into Virgo, another like energy of Virgo is sort of like back to school vibes. Um, but we'll really have that energy coming in more heavily in September. But after August 18th, when Mars moves there, you might like really all of a sudden be passionate about planners or something, you know, and just pay attention and see if you notice that. Um, and then it's also a good month for, um, letting your passion be towards health, starting or rekindling your passion for wellness practices like what really lights you up and makes you feel well in your body and don't don't follow somebody else's plan like listen to yourself and what has been enjoyable to you if it's like LARPing if you don't know what that is live action role play like if you like to go down to the park and like fight people with foam swords like I, I'm for it they do it in Asheville or at least they used to pre-pandemic but um yeah so like whatever you know even if it's like weird or whatever, like you can do anything that ignites that passion for you. This is a good month to work on that. What it's a bad month for is my way or the highway thinking. So especially once Mercury goes retrograde, but as Mars finishes up his time in Leo with Venus leaving there back to Cancer, um, there might be a little bit element of like me, 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 but then especially when Mercury goes retrograde in Leo, just watch out, especially in relationships. If you're like, oh, I've been doing all this Venus retrograde work and I've come to the conclusion that like, this is what I need. And you're like, you present it to the person you're in relationship with, whether that's an intimate partner or like whoever, um, it, it's any relationships, but especially intimate partners, but really any relationships, um, this is true for, so it could be boss, friend, whatever. Um, if you're like, I've thought a lot about it, I've done this work, and like, here's what I need. Oh, just be careful with that because um, like sort of the antidote to that my way or the highway thinking is presenting to the person, here's what I've been experiencing and, ex and approaching that with some curiosity to see if they've been experiencing something similar, if they have a different take, if there's a way that you can both get your needs met. So just be careful for that. Um, so, so it's one thing to come and present a need and, and have a very direct, explicit need. It's another thing to like be really rigid around being perceived a certain way or having your, your partner agree with your experience. Can you just op approach everything this month, but especially communication and relationships, um, but then also like your goals and, and routines and habits with 
just openness and curiosity. That's going to be the antidote to that my way or the highway thinking that could be high this month. Um, it's also a bad month for jumping to conclusions. So like I was saying, please, uh, when I say it's a bad month for just FYI, every month I say it's a good month for doing these things. And I say it's a bad month for, and I say like, it's because the things that I come up with that it's a bad month for are likely based on the energies. So try to avoid these things, right? So try to avoid jumping to conclusions or having a rigid thinking around how things are going to play out. And the antidote to that is listening and being open to possibilities and approaching things with playful curiosity. Okay. And then it's also still a bad month for sudden changes in relationship status. And so that's like, don't go to Vegas and get married. Maybe also don't break up because you had a fight. Okay. Even if it's a fight that's been repeated, because actually I think it's the Gottmans that have said in their research that whatever, um, couples fight about early on, they're going to be fighting about the same shit forever. Like the same fights are going to come up for the rest of their relationship. And some people make it through it and some people don't. So, um, if you're having a moment where you're like, we always fight about this, I'm done. Just be careful with that during Venus retrograde. Same thing. So that goes for breaking up, getting in a new relationship or, um, going back to exes, getting in an old relationship or like getting married. So changing your relationship status up or down, maybe just like chill with it this month and be chill and offer that same chillness to your partner. Okay. Um, and then also sudden, it's a bad month for sudden changes in appearance. So if you th were thinking about getting bangs or whatever, like if you've been wanting to do this and you were just now able to get a, a haircut or just now thought about it, like that might be a Venus retrograde thing. Like, Oh, I've been meaning to get a haircut. I should really make an appointment. That's one thing. But if you're like, I don't know, especially going through a breakup and want to get some edgy haircut, it could be fine, but just, I don't know. It's just something we always caution to be careful about. Cause sometimes that's the, the stuff that people regret. Um, it could be extra good or it could be extra bad. That's the thing with retrogrades is it's not necessarily bad. It just means the energy is stronger and the energy of Venus is abundance, relationships, luxury and appearance and beauty. Right. Okay. So all that to say your yoga practices for the month is going to be still heart opening for Venus retrograde, especially, and you might also do some face yoga or just like apply moisturizer to your face and massage your face. Um, uh, that was stuff will be all good for Venus retrograde because cancer is the face as well as the chest. So opening the chest and then also can you incorporate some deep listening to your body, to your sensations, to your breath? Can you structure your yoga practice or classes that way all month long um, for the month of Shravana? And then also something we were practicing this morning in our moon day class, which by the way is always free to come to. Um, and you can go to yogiscopes.com slash classes to start the week off with a gentle movement practice and about a 10, 15 minute meditation. This morning we were focusing on the suspension of the breath and what happens at that pause. Can you practice that pause? Can you practice being comfortable in the pause and letting it be natural and not something that stirs you up or shakes you up, that kind of thing. And so the, the recording is too late to get that unless you're in the membership. Maybe I'll put it on YouTube. If, if you want it, please let me know. And then I definitely will. But it, other than that, it's kind of like a, if I have time, I will. Um, so here are your journal prompts. First couple related to staying well in liminal spaces and moments of transition is what activities or habits make you feel physically and mentally well? Can you set some intentions for incorporating these practices into your routine this month? So that's related to the Mars and Saturn, Venus, all that stuff I talked about. Um, and then second question related to liminal spaces and moments of transition is, is there something from your past that you'd like to revisit or give another try? How can you approach the opportunity differently this time? Because as they say in the rooms, of, you know, anonymous programs is trying things over and over again and expecting the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So what can you do differently and what do you hope to achieve? 
Like, are you just doing it for the pride and glory of it? That's one thing. Maybe Leo energy is high, like whatever. But is it something that your soul feels like it needs? Okay, so maybe you think about that. And then the second set of questions is related to flowing with change versus perseverance. So how do you navigate that? That's going to be a major theme of the month is like, when do you let stuff fall off versus when do you grit down and bear down and persevere? And that's something we all have to navigate and figure out. So here's some journal prompts to help. First being describe a recent situation where you felt limited or faced obstacles. How did you handle it? And what strategies could you use to maintain your focus and perseverance? And number two, explore your feelings about change and impermanence. How can you find peace in the midst of life's constant transitions? And then third set of questions is around rigidity versus open heartedness. So like I said, that rigid thinking might be coming up this month. So reflect on a situation where you found yourself holding on too tightly to your own beliefs or ideas. How can you open yourself up to different perspectives and embrace a more flexible mindset? So maybe that rings true. Maybe you can think of a situation. If not, try these other couple questions. I tried to hit like multifacets of experience. So these might not all feel relevant to you. So you don't have to do them all. You can choose which one you like best. So number two related to rigidity, rigidity versus open heartedness is Write about a time when you allowed yourself to be vulnerable and open hearted. How did that impact your relationships and overall sense of fulfillment? Like something that you had to grit down and find courage to do, Brene Brown style. And then third question. So maybe those first two, maybe one resonated, one didn't. And then the third question related to that is take a moment to journal about a meaningful conversation you've had recently. What made it special and how did it affect your relationship with the other person? And if you haven't had a meaningful conversation recently, maybe you can take the time to do so and practice these skills of open heartedness, approaching it with curiosity, taking time to deeply listen rather than having your um, script or how you think the conversation is supposed to unfold. Just practice that curiosity, that open heartedness, that openness to what could happen. So with all that said, if you need help sorting through any of this stuff, a reading would be great for that. Grab a reading at yogiscopes.com slash offerings or join us in the Birth Chart Basics mini course that's already loaded up with lessons and you can join us for a live Q&A on August 20th. And with all that said, please remember to keep your feet on the ground, your head in the stars, and stay in the light. Until next time, friends, take care.